Okay, and we are live. Welcome everyone to the live stream. You know, these are, uh, I try and stick to, to nine o'clock on these. Nine o'clock, this is uh, European time, but obviously it doesn't always happen like that. And today we're a little late, but that's, uh, you know, that's kind of part of it. So um, we'll get going. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about expressive finger picking and techniques to elevate your songwriting. Um, and we're going to kind of look at one song that of my song, and that's in standard tuning. Uh, before I open, I usually like to kind of chat a little bit um, and, you know, get kind of comfortable before before I open the um, the chat the, the, the or before I look at the chat. Um, but I do encourage you to, to, you know, to do chats and to um, ask as many questions, you know. With these live streams, it's like, uh, I like to have a, a topic for, for each one. Um, and, but, you know, it's nice to, you can ask any question really. Um, so please feel free to, to ask away any question that you might have on any topic, you know, uh, this just happens to be talking about finger picking, but any question is, is welcome, you know. Um, last week's live stream was actually a lot of fun. I just played songs and just kept it really kind of informal and, and free. And I kind of like that, you know, I like to have some, some structure in there. So I've got my notes and stuff, um, but at the same time, you know, we'll keep it free. Um, I won't be going on for very long on this one because it's quite late already as it is. Um, I just took my son to bed and so uh, I always fall asleep whenever I do that. So I'm a little tired. Um, plus I got my, my hot cocoa here. So that's probably going to make me even more sleepy. But um, I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday wherever you are. And if you're in the US, then, you know, it's probably the afternoon where you are, so you're probably not sleepy at all. Um, so, yeah, we had a really good one last week. It was a lot of fun, and we, we got talking about songs and releasing and various different kind of techniques when it comes to releasing songs and, and all this sort of stuff. And... Um, you know, I have lots of plans for 2024, and um, I'll be I'll be talking about that in some upcoming videos. Um, but I definitely have some plans in terms of where this channel is going and where where I want to be going as a musician, um, and also where where we can go together and to kind of help each other and this sort of thing. So I've got lots of kind of plans that I want to kind of share with all of you and all in good time. Um, but in this one, um, we're gonna just going to be looking at finger picking techniques, and I just want to kind of share my ideas and my thoughts on on this particular song that I'm doing. So I'm in standard tuning, so I really want to make this accessible for everyone. Um, so I'm just going to play a little bit of this song, and um, you know, and then and then I'll kind of get into it and talk about all the kind of little bits of it. It's called Holiday. Soon. 
So that was uh, a little bit of the song Holiday. And I'll just look, we'll go here to I'll open the chat and uh, we'll see if anybody's here. One second. Um, just open my chat box. Hey, how's it going? Jasper commented. Uh, Nicholas, how's it going? Welcome to the live stream. Uh, divided by Time Studios. How's it going? Um, I know you use the K, K, you mean the KM184 at one point. What mics it be using here? Um, I'm actually, you can't actually see it. I'm using the Neumann TLM107 for this one. I've been using that a lot recently. Uh, but I also like to use, I like to use the KM184, um, but not necessarily when, when I'm singing as well at the same time. You know, if I'm just capturing the guitar, then I would do that. Um, but yeah, I'm using this. Let's see if I can put it in the shot to show you. Here it is. Can't see it a little bit. So it's just out of shot there. But um, yeah. Hey, Jasper. My Jasper says my biggest breakthrough was when I kept the bass going through the song without pausing it. it. Took me almost four years to separate the thumb from the fingers before it was just flying nonstop. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. So this is this is kind of the stuff that I've that I do. So I've been influenced by a lot of kind of folk and blues uh, guitarists, where you're using a lot of that alternate thumb picking. You know, this kind of thing. You mean? Do you mean this sort of stuff, or this type of stuff? You know, and I take a lot of influence from that. Um, and this song it is as well influenced by that but it's a lot freer it's a lot more kind of it has a lot more space in there you know this is kind of the that's kind of the bass line you know you know and it's it's basically doing the same thing there um, instead it's, instead of alternate alternating between the two there just kind of doing that yeah Travis picking type of stuff exactly yeah um, but I really like to kind of mix it up and and 
have the the melody, the singing melody at the same time as as playing it, you know. This is something I really enjoy and I also got that from a lot of folk, folk and especially blues players as well, you know. And doing something like that is, um, it's a little bit more tricky, you know, um, because you have to kind of think about your, your thumb has to be doing a completely different rhythm to what your fingers are doing, you know. Um, but to kind of really break it down, what I'm doing here, you know, I don't, I try not to think of it as chords as such, you know, like oh, I'm doing the G chord here, I've got kind of a F sharp over D or whatever here, uh, I've got a B, I've got a C here, you know, um, it's, it's kind of like, I'm, I'm just thinking in terms of the bass line, you know, um, and I really enjoy the key of G major because there's just so many open strings, you know, um, and I love open strings. That's why I love uh, uh, alternate tunings, you know, because I can use a lot of these open strings and playing in the key of G. I mean, I know I've got the capo really high here, so, but in my mind, you know, I'm in playing in the key of G major fingering. Um, you know, I can use all these three uh, D, G, and B strings, you know, um, and when I'm, when I'm going through, when I'm composing, I'm just, I'm basically just having these strings open, you know, because I know these are the, basically it's a G chord, you know, just having these, and I'm going through the bass lines, and I'm kind of seeing what I'd like, and seeing what fits, you know, and that's how I kind of, that's how I, how I write really. So I'm not really thinking in terms of chords as such. It's just more like a bass line, you know, and it's really breaking it down to simple terms. Um, and it's just one, literally one finger. I don't know if you can see kind of the bass line is always, pretty much always just one finger. And then I have another, an open string to kind of accommodate it, you know. I call them filler notes, these ones. So they're not the notes that I'm hitting there on the one, but all the other ones, you know, they're just kind of fillers. And a lot of the time they're, they're just open strings, you know. Um, so that's kind of like the, the a lot of, the, of, of how I come up with this song, you know. Um, in terms of the writing stage of it. You know, and you can you can kind of do this with with any song really. You know, if you have if you have a song where you have I don't know a G chord. Let's take like some simple chords: a G, a D, and an A minor. You know, something like that. do a similar kind of thing you know you can um, instead of I could do something like this you know I think that's the cause to knocking on heaven's door right <laughs> I think so um, and that's all good, that's all well and good, but it's, I try to make it, I like to introduce a little bit of the melody in there, you know, just to kind of make it a bit more interesting. Whatever that melody is gonna be, you know. If it's knocking on heaven's door, see if I can do that. D chord is actually quite a little tricky to do as a bass note because it's quite, it's not as, 
it's not as uh, it's not as low down, you know. It's quite hard up there because um, you're limited with the, the the strings that you can use. You know, you can only use that one open D string there. Um, it would be a lot easier if I was to go to like the 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 E, you know. Then I'd have a lot more space and a lot more strings to play with. But anyway, um, you see my point there. So it's it's just kind of making finger picking just a little bit basically Travis picking uh, just making it a little bit more interesting you know um, and this this is a big chunk of, of what I do and with a lot of my songs um, is basically that you know um, allows for improvising you know it makes a great if I have a really simple bass line like this you know I can really improvise on a lot of these these high open strings these high the the first and second string sense so um, this is really what I, what I like to do a lot um, and I'm hoping with this with this live stream it can kind of uh, yeah make finger picking a little bit more interesting and I'm talking about rather this sort of Travis picking stuff you know you know and maybe you can try it with one of your songs um, if you have something, uh, let's say you're in G again, you know, and you you just have a strumming song. And you want to turn it into something that's finger picking, you know. Um, Instead of kind of doing that, which a lot of people would probably do, um, I would just keep it really simple like this, you know. And then try, and whatever melody you have over the top, try and then play the melody on top of that. sense so um, it just makes it makes it a whole lot more interesting uh, for the listener and also for you as the player it's a little bit more tricky um, because it's not just it's not just taking taking a chord and then putting a finger picking pattern over the top you know um, it's a lot more than that but the good thing is, you know, you can take it kind of step by step. Um, and like Jasper said, you know, it's it's a lot of it is is getting that thumb kind of down. So it can work on its own, you know, 
because you really want to work on the independence of your thumb and your fingers. And that just comes with, with just trying to, to do this sort of thing with as many songs as you can, you know. Um, and just getting used to playing the thumb doing its own thing, you know. So you don't even have to think about it. I love uh, G, G major. <laughs> it's just a, such a nice uh, fingering to play in. You know, it's not necessarily the key that I really like. It's just the fingering. It's just because of all those open strings, it just allows for so many possibilities, you know. So like before, you know, feel free to ask any questions as we're going along. I won't, I won't make be going too long on this live stream because um, it's uh, it's quite late already. I, I started late. Sorry, but you know, feel free to ask any question about microphones, guitars, anything here. I'm just I like to choose, you know. Uh, A, uh, a a theme for each kind of live stream so i have stuff to talk about really you know <laughs> all right um i'll just go to the comments here hello uh what does that say don fridu it's don don fredu hello says hello from switzerland sorry if i pronounce your names wrong um, how important is it to have long nails? Does it help? Um, for me, yeah, absolutely it helps. Um, it really it really depends on what kind of sound you're after, you know. Um, all of this, anything with the right hand, it really, uh, it, it really influences the tone of what kind of tone you get, you know. So if you have no nails at all, if you just play with the skin, which I've done in the past, which is has a it has a really mellow sound, you know. Uh, obviously, uh, and there are players that that play with just with no nails at all, you know. One of my all-time heroes, Kelly Joe Phelps, uh, he played with with no nails, with just his fingers, and it was a very really warm, mellow sound. Um, uh, but, you know, if you want a little bit more kind of kick in there, you know, how to explain it with the nails. A little bit more high end, a little bit more crisp on the, on the, on the strings, you know, then I would use nails. Um, I, I try to keep my nails short and I kind of angle them like this. And then I can kind of take, uh, depending on what angle I'm picking from, I can use like a mixture of the, the skin and the nail. And then I can choose how much nail I want on that. You know, this is with, this is with just mainly skin here. And then I turn it, you can hear, it changes the, the tone, you know, and the volume because you're playing with with nails or picks it's going to change the volume slightly as well you know so that's what I quite like is having kind of a mixture of both but I try not to keep them too long um, but some players you know have really long nails and they just like that sound of, of nails and some players use finger picks and that's a completely different sound as well you know so um, I'd say try just give it a try 
with all of them, you know, and see what you see what works for you. I've tried them all. I've had like false nails. I've done it all. Um, at the moment, I'm just using my natural nails um, because the tricky thing with false nails is that it really deteriorates your your real nail deteriorates so much it gets really thin because you're just sticking glue on it the whole time which is obviously not good for the nail um so uh yes <laughs> i just, i didn't really like that because it, it forced me to keep on buying false nails and attaching them and it's a whole hassle this way you know i can i'd use my real nails and i like to keep them strong you know so they're um so i quite like that i do sometimes apply like some hardener nail hardener and stuff like this sometimes but yeah i say give it a try so it all depends on what kind of sound you're after um i think i missed something um uh like some taylor james taylor stuff yeah exactly yeah james taylor's really nice stuff um you could do the c shape the C-shaped D chord. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I could do the C-shaped D chord. Um, instead of the D, that's true. Um, but I still like to do like, you know, I could, sometimes I like to put the, the F-sharp from the D, you know, in the bass and stuff like this. Um, and that could also technically be my, my D chord in a way, you know stuff like this but yeah I mean I like to I like to keep it very very simple in terms of the bass line and just have like one one note and bass line and then a and then a filler note there as well but yeah absolutely um, G is the God chord <laughs> for sure um, do you ever feel your right arm hinders the top from vibrating freely um, I don't know I never really feel that too much I never thought about that to be honest um, yeah because it's kind of resting there a little bit I guess it would do to some extent you know every every little thing has an effect on the sound right um, I don't know, but these these Loudons are just so it's so resonant, you know. For me, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much, you know. Um, do you feel like that with your guitar? Uh, I don't know what what you could do to to kind of change that, right? Kind of. I mean, I guess if you would do it the classical way, right? That is, uh, maybe would that be less? Is that less? I don't even know. Maybe, maybe slightly less. Um, that's doing it this way is probably a lot better for my arm as well, because my arm is like really high up here, but I'm just so used to doing it this way. Um, Yeah, you're welcome, no problem, you know. If you have any more questions, then let me know. Um, I'm just going to keep on talking about this, this finger-picking stuff, you know. Uh, feel free if you have any more questions here. Um, so, with this song I'm doing, especially when I'm composing, the bass line kind of follows follows the chords here, you know. Um, and then I play the melody over the top.
This is not something that I do on every song, you know. Some songs it's just nice to have, especially the rhythmical ones, you know. Um, try and do an example, but all of a lot of my songs are in dadgad, not in standard tuning. there's like a fast paced song it's nice to just kind of do that alternate thumb picking stuff um, and, and kind of keep that drive keep that melody going um, you know that's also nice to do but when it's something like this and there's lots of space I like to do something a bit more interesting and, and play the melody you know as I'm singing it One thing I really like to do is to, uh, I really like to work on is, is dynamics, you know. I think having lots of dynamics in a song to me um, is, is so important. You know, all the emotion is in the dynamics, I feel. It's a lot it's a lot of it is just kind of subtle dynamics I mean I've talked about dynamics in the past but um, it's just like the way a note is played you know um, whether it's like I like doing pull-offs when I play a note technically it's two notes but that pull-off hammer on it just adds in these different kind of dynamics and different tonalities you know That's why I like to use just keep it really basic and simple when I'm going through the bass line, you know, because I like to have as many um, as many opportunities available to me, as many strings available to me as I can, you know. Because then I have more more possibilities, you know, of notes, especially if I'm improvising. So that's that's a lot about what uh, that side of things. Mm. I'd say also, uh, don't be afraid of space as well. Especially when improvising, you know, um, I try not to fill all the space with as many notes as I can, you know, although that can be fun.
lot of space in between these things. And so everything I'm doing here is is just improvising, except obviously the bass notes, you know. That I'm keeping consistent. So all the high notes there, I've, I've just been improvising. Um, and when you're doing that, talking about improvising, it's it's good to be aware of what notes you're using for the bass notes because obviously those oh no what sorry what fingers you're going to be using for the bass notes because obviously though whatever fingers you're using for these bass notes are not going to be available for all the other notes you know It's just kind of good to be aware of that and try not to use like a finger that would make it awkward to to play it and a note on the the first string for example or whatever um, so that's something I always try and be aware of not used to being in standard tuning. So it might go out a little bit. This is a really cool tuner. About something else, just a little bit. I really like this tuner. Might do a little video on this soon. It's a snark air. What's cool about it is that it it doesn't require batteries. You can charge it, which I love, which is just like, why has no one done this before? The amount of money I've spent on batteries um, for these clip-on tuners. And also, it's so discreet compared to their other ones that have like an arm and it's all... I mean, you can have it this way as well, but... Yeah, then you see the plane. I'm not too fond of that. Uh, but just having it at the back there, you know, it's just this tiny little thing which is just barely noticeable, which I quite like. Uh, just as a side note, anyway. I'll head to the comments now. Oh, we've got a few. Here we go. Let me have a look. Where Jasper says, with Travis picking, the melody stands out really, really well if you do it correctly. The melody line is the same as the vocal line. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. You can with Travis. You mean like this sort of stuff? Where it's always, I find it's always on the offbeat though, you know? Although I guess you can kind of make it so it's on the onbeat, right? Uh, is that what you mean? I think it is, right? Um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh, sorry, Jasper, you said that earlier. I think I missed that. Sorry. Do, 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 do. Ah, yeah, okay. Divided by Time Studio says, I asked because all the new guitars coming with armrests and companies selling attachable armrests, how much is a gimmick? And what I've been wondering, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't really seen too many armrests, to be honest, but that's because I'm probably not looking at 
at new guitars that much. Um, I'll look into that. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the gimmick. That could be something to actually try out, you know, and um, if you can get like armrests that attach just to see what it's, um, if it makes any difference, you know. Um, I always find it's really hard to tell when you're playing, you know. The best thing would to do is just to make a, two different recordings and then have a listen separately. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. I'll make a note of that. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Jasper says, I anchor my pinky. The other four I dedicate to the specific strings. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that a lot as well with uh, with the Travis picking. Yeah. Um, Kelly Joe Phelps did that a lot as well. I did that uh, for years as well. Um, I just found with with like anchoring, I mean, you can see here, <laughs> that's like a lot of that is through like anchoring and like digging in with my finger. Um, it my it, it kind of forces your right hand to be very close to the strings so you you have to be at a certain angle you know like my thumb here if my if i don't know if you can see that my if my pinky is resting here my thumb has to you know i can't i can't get any i can't get at any other angle or if, it's quite hard you know so i have to bring it out to to get if you can see that, I don't know. you know, this kind of angle, which is more kind of classical kind of stuff. Um, and then still being able to do this and bringing it in, you know. Um, I just kind of like the freedom of kind of being able to, to kind of do that a little bit. But I know what you mean. It's nice to have, it is nice to have an anchor. And uh, more often than not, my anchor is is one of my fingers, you know, is my thumb or something, or sometimes I just can play completely freehand, you know, and that's okay for me, but yeah, absolutely, it's, it's, it can be a, a, a good thing to have an anchor for sure. Um, divided by Time Studio says, I always found when all my friends were Tuning down and playing lower, I always had a love for capos and opening new possibilities. So I always appreciate a good capo player. Yeah, I really like capos. I mean, you know, some people feel um, different feelings about capos, whether it's uh, cheating or whatever. But no, nah, it's it's I really enjoy having being able to kind of transpose a different key in the in, in certain fingering i really like i have my kind of favorite fingerings especially in standard tuning you know there's g like this one i'm doing really like g um and then just to being able to just play that fingering in a different key is just really handy um and especially if you're doing you're, you're tuning down and everything like this, you know, um, I really enjoy uh, the, the, the different tonalities that a capo can bring you, you know, absolutely. Um, uh, what do you think about improvising? Good school? Uh, how do you mean good school? Uh, okay, do you need theory to improvise? No, I don't think so. I don't think you need theory to improvise. I think you need to, you can you can absolutely improvise by ear. Um, you know, um, I only use a, a little bit of theory just to kind of, mainly to kind of know where the bass notes are and kind of as long as you know where the notes are you know in the key um, 
and it's, it's not like you need to know exactly all the chords in the key and all the notes and everything like this, you know. Um, we can all kind of hear, you don't even need to know the names of the notes really. You can kind of hear the notes, you know. You can hear that that's, that's the root note, right? You know, you can kind of hear this scale. it out you don't need to know the names of these notes you know um, so I'd say sometimes it's more important to train your ears um, rather than train your theory although it is it is very useful to know to know the theory you know for sure I'm not not saying it's not I'm just saying um, there's plenty of musicians out there that knew nothing about theory and they were still able to, to be amazing musicians. And they probably would be able to be even better musicians if they did know theory. But still, you know, you don't, you don't need to know theory in order to play amazingly, you know. Um, I'd say you need a, a good ear uh, is, is more important, you know. So with improvising, I would just kind of work out where the notes are in whatever key or tuning you're using. Um, just work out where all the notes are that you want to use, you know. Uh, and work out where the notes are that you don't want to use, you know. And even just try them, see how they sound, because there's no bad note. You know, sometimes you might find it works. Um, just kind of, you know, pick, pick random notes. Um, and use your ear to make the decision whether you think that sounds good or not. Um, hope that answers your question. <laughs> hope that helps. Uh, but that's how I approach uh, improvising, you know. Um, yeah. Jasper says, try the polytune tuner. Great for alternate tunings. Yeah, I have... Where is it now? Uh, oh, it's all the way over there. I've got the TC Electronic um, Polytune tuner. The first one, they've they've brought out like a mini one now and uh, probably a few others. Um, but yeah, they're really good. Do they do, do they do a clip-on tuner? I don't know. Um, I, I should look into that actually. No, I really like the TC Electronic tuners that they've they've brought out. Um, it's just with this one, it's just these these clip-on ones are quite useful, you know. If you have if you're not plugging in to a pickup, um, but maybe they do a polytune that is a clip-on as well. Um, I just really like that I don't have to use uh, a battery anymore because I hate buying these batteries, uh, wasting money. I'd rather charge it. Um, how often do you change your strings? Uh, how do you know it's time to change them? Um, yeah, I mean, it, de it depends on how much I'm playing and how much I'm playing live. So if I'm on a tour and I'm playing every day, then I could be changing them like every week. Um, but that's because I'm, I'll be playing a lot you know and I like to keep them fresh so it, it really depends um, when are these when is it a time to change them when they're when they really are sounding dull I mean it's all a preference thing as you know um, like everything but for me it it's when they're really sounding dull and I can really notice it and when they start really getting out of tune a lot easier you know that's that's when you know uh, for me but it all depends on the strings as well you know some strings last a lot longer than others um, these are Dodario EJ EJ 17 which are medium gauge phosphor bronze strings which I really like um, they're quite they're quite bright and they last a fair bit too you know and they're not too they're not too pricey um, you know 
so it's it, yeah it kind of depends on on uh, on on a few different variables but i'd say when it when you really notice the sound the sound is really dull and they're just dirty um i've tried like you can obviously you can clean them and i've tried like some various sort of you can get this what is it uh, called fast fret stuff um I've tried using that which is just like a lubricant stuff um but it's it's not a great way of it it maybe will make them sound a little bit better for one more day but then they'll sound dull again you know so it's it's best to just change them but um at the moment i'm not really changing them too often um because i'm not really playing live shows uh too much at the moment but i'm hoping that will change very soon um you know so yeah i'd say when when they start getting dull and they start uh getting out of tune a lot easier than normal you know so just uh yeah what strings do you usually use just out of interest um Hey, Vladimir, how's it going? Good to have you at the live stream. I started a little late today because um, I was uh, I was putting my son to bed and um, he just wouldn't sleep. He just wouldn't go to sleep. And uh, <laughs> so I didn't start until almost 10 o'clock. Um, so, but it always makes me exhausted every time I put him to sleep. So now I'm like, I'm really drowsy. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I don't know how long I'll be able to last on this live stream, but we'll see. It's quite late here. It's like 10, 10.37 at night at the moment. Um, and welcome to the live stream. Great to see these videos. Thank you. Songwriting can be extremely lonely sometimes. Nice to see others uh others exploring yeah absolutely nice to see you here that's that's kind of one of the reasons why i started doing a lot more you know on youtube and everything like this it's it can be very lonely and um you know it's nice to kind of have these especially these live streams that's pretty much what it's all about you know it's just kind of sharing thoughts and ideas and, and answering questions and and just seeing what how other people do things, you know, because um, it's yeah, you know, we we spend so much time alone, <laughs> for sure. Uh, da -da. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I do appreciate it. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. Glad it helps. Um, yeah, so if you just joined us, then I am talking about finger style, finger picking techniques to elevate your songwriting. So, uh, and I talked about this song, Holiday. Where I'm basically uh, playing the melody while I'm singing it, and this is something that I do a lot. Um, and it's something, you know, that you could, some of you could try and explore with your own songs, you know. Because I think like finger picking or finger style, um, it has, you're able to, to be very unique with the way you do it. You know, I think with strumming, a lot of strumming sounds very similar, you know, that's the, I think that's the kind of the thing, the problem, one of the problems I have with strumming, why I don't do it too much. Um, when you're playing, when you're actually picking the strings, you know, there's, there's so many different options that you can choose, you know, in terms of the notes and how you pick them and, and in terms of dynamics and everything like that. Of course, I know you can still do that with, with strumming, uh, but I think it's less, it's less so, you know, um, you can 
we can all really put our unique spin on finger picking, you know. Um, and it doesn't have to be overly complicated at all. Um, like with this song, I really go down to the, the, the basic roots of it, you know. Like I was saying earlier, if you missed it, um, I don't think in terms of chords as such when I'm, when I'm songwriting. I just think in terms, I start with the bass line, you know. Um, and when I'm playing, I'm in standard tuning here. And I'm in the key of G, G major. Um, and if, I love G major because it has all these open strings, you know, these D, Gs and Bs here. So you can go through and try different bass notes, you know. And then compare them to these open strings, which is basically a G chord. Then you kind of know how it will sound in the key of, of, of what you're in, you know. You know, so this is kind of what I do when I go through and I'm choosing different notes here. And I could have thought of like, oh, this is a G, this is a uh, I don't know, F sharp over over D, this is a B, this is a C, but I just think in the in the notes, okay, this is a, a in terms of notes and also in terms of the, the the where they are in the scale, you know. So it's that's the root. Okay, now go down to the seven. Uh, one, two, and then go to the three, and then go to the four, you know the fifth you know um, and you don't like I was saying earlier you don't you don't necessarily need to know a massive amount of theory um, it does help knowing the scale you know and you don't you don't even need to know the names of the notes um, you know we can all kind of hear the scale right you should be able to hear the scale uh, and work out the major scale or the minor scale, whatever key you're playing in. Um, and then just kind of pick pick those notes, you know. Start with the bass notes. Start really simple. And that's what I did. And then I just have these filler notes, what I call filler notes, which are these notes, which are usually like these open strings, you know. And they kind of just help fill in the gaps, you know, that's what they're there for. And that keep, keeps the rhythm. You know, and that's, that's most of the song kind of done, really. Um, well, sort of. <laughs> Not done, but you know what I mean. That's most of the chords kind of set up, or the bass line. And then I use mainly these kind of, the first and second strings to kind of, to play the, the melody over the top. Many Vibes is here. How's it going? <laughs> uh, sounds so good. Thanks so much. Taking notes. <laughs> I'm so bummed I missed most of the live stream. Oh, no worries. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, no, we've just, uh, just been talking about the expressive finger picking. And one of the things I mean by expressive is dynamics dynamics is something I've done a whole live stream on just dynamics um, dynamics is I think one of the most important things you, 
can use. Um, it, it really, there's such a link between dynamics and emotion, you know. Um, I really try and have as many dynamics as I can. Um, and that's quiet and loud, but also tonality, you know, how, how I'm playing the notes. Um, I mean, we can get into lots of detail, but, you know, using, using techniques such as hammering on and pulling off, you know, um, can be really effective tools for, for showing dynamics, you know. Um, I'll try and do some examples. That's a hammer on. Pull off. This sort of thing that I do a lot is pull off. I one note. Okay, it's, it's two notes, but one note is it's quite loud, it's quite sharp, and then immediately pull off. And then the second note is always quite dull. You know, this sort of thing. You know, you can barely hear it, but it it's quite effective for using dynamics. And all I'm doing here is just improvising on this stuff, you know. Um, I'm keeping this bass line, which is root seven, major seven, major third, major fourth. Or perfect fourth, I think. play some notes we didn't mean to play, but that's all right. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a lot of what I, what I basically wanted to talk about. Today, um, I'm just kind of going over it and repeating myself, basically. But if you have any questions, um, then please please uh, fire away because um, I'll be here for a little bit longer and then I think I'll have to, uh, I'll have to uh, go to bed pretty soon because <laughs> I'm pretty tired. Uh, <laughs> I'm so glad I understand what he's saying. Uh, that me? What you understand what I'm saying? Or oh no, there was another question. Sorry. Uh, so sorry for my silly question, but can you pick and strumming? Pick and strumming on the strokes one and two and three and four and like a mix. If yes, can you show as an example? Um, let's see what you. Let's see if I see what you mean. Pick and strumming on the strokes. Do you mean like one and... Do you mean this kind of stuff? Picking and strumming? Or like this sort of stuff? You can mix picking and strumming for sure, you know, in various different ways. Um, I don't really do it too much. Um, there's a lot of a lot of musicians, a lot of guitarists that do it like this stuff. It can be fun, you know, to add some rhythmical kind of sense there. I don't do it too much, um, but you know, that's just me. I prefer to kind of keep things a bit more simpler, but you can absolutely do that. You know, adding some rhythmical stuff, for sure. Um, yes, that's, okay, that's what you meant, nice, yeah. 
Um, there's no there's no such thing as a silly question, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Regarding theory, I have studied it and not yet applied it, but I find when I think too much, I lose my feel of what I'm doing. Is that normal? Yes, I I feel that a lot as well. Um, I think there's a whole I think there's a whole thing on this that um, is I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a good example, but um, it's like when you're especially when you're improvising, you need to kind of forget about all the theory and everything you know and just kind of go with the feeling. Um, but you still need to know that in the back of your head, you know. Um, it's, it's, I'm trying to think of a good example. I'm, I can only think of like maybe martial arts. <laughs> That's a good, it's like, uh, you know, with martial arts, they have all this, you know, theory and everything they do, these movements and everything like that. But then to put it in a, in a practical way, you know, when they're, when they're sparring and everything, um, you know, they can't be thinking about all the, the slow movements and everything like that. They just got to kind of go with the feel, but also have it in the back of their head, but not be consciously thinking about it, if that makes sense. But yeah, I never, I'm never consciously thinking about, um, okay, what, what, what chord am I trying to play here? You know, what notes am I, am I trying to add in this? You know, would this work theoretically? I'm never... I'm never thinking theoretically, you know. Um, even though I can, if I stop, I can, okay, I can work it out, you know. Um, but yeah, it's never, it's never really conscious when I'm playing, you know. Um, as I said before, you know, you don't, you don't need theory to, to be an amazing musician, you know. Um, it's like any language, you know, you don't need to, you don't need to be able to read and write to be able to talk and communicate you know um i mean it would probably help if you want to get into like writing get into like storytelling and everything like that or poetry probably help to read and be able to read and write but you don't necessarily need it i think it's a similar thing you know uh yeah i hope that makes sense <laughs> uh Mm. Now you're welcome. Regarding songwriting and lyrics, do you consider lyrics poems? Yeah, it's um, with the way I do songwriting and lyrics, I'm very much a storyteller, you know, and that's just my style, just the way I do things um, and the influences I have. But um yeah i'm trying to at the moment i'm trying to uh tell a very tell a very detailed story with as less words as possible you know with a lot of my songs there's a lot of lyrics probably why i forget them so much because there's just so many lyrics um so at the moment i'm trying to kind of challenge myself and not use as many words use as less words as possible but still have a lot of detail in there, you know, uh, which is very hard, especially when you're storytelling. But yeah, um, I wouldn't consider my my lyrics poems as such. Um, I don't know how. Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I'd go on more of the storytelling personally. But a lot of lyrics are poems in themselves, you know. Do I take, uh, do you take or recommend songwriting workshops or classes? I don't at the moment, but I'm that, you know, that's something I'm really considering and thinking about doing something like this. Um, but at the moment, I'm not. I just don't have time for it right now. Um, and, you know, I haven't really taken any classes, any workshops myself, so I can't recommend any. Um, but if there's anyone here that has taken any songwriting workshops that could recommend anything, 
then please let us know in the comments below. Maybe there's someone here that has. But yeah, I'll be letting I'll be letting everyone know in the in the coming sort of months about uh, if I'm doing any any workshops or anything like that songwriting wise. <laughs> Any more questions, guys? I'll just keep on improvising for a little bit. Which country am I based? Um, Germany. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Uh, I'm based in Berlin in Germany. Yeah. Where's everyone from? Just out of interest. Just drop where you're from. Where where you're streaming from. Yeah, cool. Glad you're you'll be interested if I do any workshops. It's something I've really been thinking about a lot. I really enjoy doing especially these live streams and these videos talking about songwriting and all the things I talk about you know songwriting and guitar techniques and recording and stuff like this um, yeah Norway small town on the south coast nice that sounds lovely. Never been to Norway. I'd love to go. But not too far away in Berlin. You know. Could I take a train there? I could probably take a train there, right? To Norway. Probably have to take a few trains. <laughs> Magnolia City in Texas, US. Nice. Bern, Switzerland. Cool. Nice. We've got people all over. Lovely. Time to hit the bed. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm gonna go as well pretty soon. <laughs> Miss cities with good trains. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, that's one of the really nice things about living in Europe. You know, there's lots. You can get pretty much anywhere just by train. Uh, the trains in Germany are just next level. They're really nice. I'm actually from the UK though. I'm, uh, my uh, my girlfriend's German. Yeah, probably a few trains. Yeah, <laughs> some ferry boats too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. in Germany okay cool whereabouts all right have a good night um, before I go, everyone, I uh, 
if you haven't signed up to my mailing list, um, there's just a link in the description of this video below. Um, I'd really appreciate if you if you sign up. If you want uh, kind of early access to things, and I do I do like these kind of weekly uh, little little videos, and I send to my little community. I've got a little community there. Um, or you can go on just FabianHolland.com and sign up there. But there's a link on the description of this video. Um, and if I do any sort of workshops, anything like this in the future, then um, yeah, then then people that will be signed up to that community will be the first to to know. So if you want to get any information regarding anything like that, then um, sign up to that. But uh, yeah, thank you everyone for for joining. I'm going to end it now because it's 11 o'clock here in the evening and I should go to bed. Um, just quickly read the comments. Many Vibes says, along the Rhine in um, Wiesbaden. Nice. Wiesbaden, Wiesbaden, Wiesbaden. Yeah, all that along the Rhine is just amazing. My my girlfriend's family is from Heidelberg. That's all that that kind of area. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. We really like it down there. Uh, Pierce says your guitar sounds different. You still use the normal tune or other ones. Um, I'm in standard tuning. That's probably why. <laughs> Standard tuning here, and I got the capo on the sixth fret, so that's it's quite high. So maybe that's why. Yeah, probably why. Anyway, I'm gonna go to bed, guys. So have a great one. Um, I'm gonna try and do this. We family, we are we we're, we're very busy at the moment with all kinds of stuff. So I'm I do. I do this every Saturday, but um, I'm going to... Next Saturday might be tricky. I, it might have to be another late one. We'll see. I'll let everyone know. But yeah, usually every Saturday at 9 p.m. European time, uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing this live stream. So yeah, love to see everyone again next week. Thanks so much. Oh, hey, Hans. How's it going? Yeah, rewatch it. <laughs> rewatch the live stream. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. Have